she is still clueless. Hillary has yet another excuse for losing, and this one will have your blood boiling by Amy Moreno for TruthFeedNews.com. Here we go again. The biggest loser in political history is making up more excuses as to why she lost a year and a half ago. Hillary Clinton just can't shut up, and she also can't accept the fact that she is entitled, unlikable, and viewed as a crook by most of America. She is quite possibly the worst candidate in the history of politics, but she doesn't see it that way. Now Hillary is canvassing the country, blaming her loss on people who are uneasy with women in leadership roles. Good grief! Can this woman get any more clueless? From Breitbart, this week in Australia, during an interview with uh, Julia Gillard, Australia's first female prime minister, 2016 Democratic presidential nominee, Hillary Clinton said there was still a very large proportion of the population that she said was uneasy with women in positions of leadership. Clinton said there is still a very large portion of the population that is uneasy with women in positions of leadership. And so the easiest way to kind of avoid having to look at someone on her merits is to dismiss her on her looks. When asked about the lock her up chance, Clinton added, there is this fear, there is this anger, even rage about women seeking power, women exercising power, and people fall back on these attacks like, you're a witch, <laughs> what I call her, or you should go to prison, or whatever it is, and uh, the enthusiasm with which that is generated speaks to a much deeper sense of alienation that people still have towards women leaders. It's not a majority, thank goodness, it's not, but it is a very vocal minority, at least in my country, and sometimes these uh, tr uh, tropes are very much part of the press coverage. Are you kidding? And uh, unbelievable. Let's just take a quick listen. We're not going to listen to all of this. Research about likability in men and likability in women in leadership. But another aspect, I think, is the focus on appearance, you know, just the absolute forensics that get done about what women are wearing and how they look. Um, you joked that your book about um, sec being Secretary of State should have been entitled The Scrunchy Chronicles, 112 Countries, and it's still all about the hair. Um, I'm, I'm wondering whether what happened should have been entitled almost 66 million votes and it's still all about the hair. Um, can you talk to us about how this question of appearance just drags at uh, women leaders? Well, you know, look, the, the double standard is alive and well and it is more difficult for women in public positions. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about politics, but it's true in business, it's true in the media, it's just true across the board, uh, because there are uh, expectations about women's uh, appearance that are deep in our uh, collective DNA, uh, so that people feel free to uh, comment either favorably or unfavorably about hairstyles, clothing fashions, and all the rest of it. Now, some of that is because we are still getting used to seeing women in these roles. Um, when you are the only woman doing something or you are the first woman doing something, there is no basis of comparison. Uh, and, and so the attention is you know, really uh, focused on, on the superficial in part because people are trying to make sense of it. You know, in politics, uh, men come in all sizes and shapes. Uh, all kinds of hairstyles or no hair at all and <laughs> it, it is not remarked upon because you are used to seeing men in 
these roles, and you are also because that's who the uh, that that's who you are expecting to see. You are um, also you know very used to seeing differences in how they present themselves. Uh, but let's get to the part where the lady and, has to lock her up. And you know, you finish it. You do the best you can, and then you know. <laughs> He attacked her face, and he attacked the women oh. repeatedly, including the one woman on the stage who was vying for the Republican nomination. He didn't attack her successful business background or her views on issues. He attacked her face, and he attacked the women's faces of commentators and interviewers who were asking him things. Now, why did he do that, other than the fact that he is what he is? But why did he do that? Because it was a way of undermining the women he was insulting. And there is a big audience for that, I regret to tell you, uh, that there is still a very large proportion of the population that is uneasy with women in positions of leadership. And you know, that we're still getting used to it but it can easily cascade into a really nasty end. Um, you know, I, as Prime Minister, uh, referred to as a witch. Uh, a commentator said that I should be uh, put in a chaff bag and drowned at sea. Uh, I had to point out that you couldn't drown a witch, so they needed to <laughs> work out exactly what they wanted to do. Um, but it just dismayed me that, you know, for you, this ended up with chance of lock her up or string her up uh, at Republican rallies. String her up. It's like the Salem witch trials again. You know, why, why do you think it gets there, as nasty as that? Well, you know, I, um, I was talking about this question with a, a very well-known classic scholar. Really? Uh, Professor Mary Beard from Cambridge University. And she has just written a, a short, punchy book about women in power. And she traces these attitudes and these insults uh, about women back to our earliest recorded history and writing. Uh, she starts with, uh, uh, you know, Homer and Virgil and the way women uh, both real women and mythological women um, are treated, how they get their comeuppance. Uh, and she, she wrote a piece during uh, the election uh, about the horrible uh, slogans and pictures that were uh, being sold at the Republican convention. And, you know, just awful, awful things that were being talked about, which was one of the nicest things that was said, um, and yeah, because she, she is a that, witch. You know, it, there is this in fear, reality. There is this uh, anger, even rage, about uh, women seeking power, women exercising power, and people fall back on these um, attacks, like you're a witch, or you should go to prison, or whatever it is. And, and the enthusiasm with which that is uh, generated uh, speaks to a much deeper uh, sense of uh, alienation that people still have uh, toward women leaders. And, and, you know, it's not a majority, thank goodness, it's not. But it's a very vocal uh, minority, at least in, in my country. And well, the, the things that we know about Hillary, which is the least of it, and string her up is the least of it, basically. And might I add uh, that she was wearing a $1,100 Hermes uh, uh, shawl there, the, what is that, uh, that scarf, $1,100 to hide her neck brace, or the back brace, excuse me. I mean, the woman, uh, to, to uh, lock her up, it would be the least, of the least for this, the corruption, the corruption. It has nothing to do with her being a woman. It has to do with the corruption I mean, she, I think, is the ringleader 
that was the ringleader, not Bill Clinton. This one was the ringleader. She was in control of all of it. Bill Clinton was just the, uh, so to speak, pretty face in front of the camera. But she was the one that was doing all the dealings. And to say at that time that uh, women were, uh, uh, you know, they were talking about women not getting ahead. She was already ahead. She was wheeling and dealing because she was a witch. That's why uh, at that time when she was wheeling and dealing, let alone what she's doing today. But today, you know, uh, she's running out of steam. Uh, and that's why she uh, she's wearing her $1,100 Hermes, uh, uh, Hermes uh, scarf there to hide that uh, back brace there. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.